Hello everyone. In this Tech Tips video, we're going to cover the basics of ClearPath's digital oscilloscope and how to use it for data collection. There are countless reasons you might want to use a digital oscilloscope, which is often referred to scope for short. Some uses include measuring move times, verifying performance and accuracy, measuring the real-time torque, troubleshooting mechanical issues, and more. So I've got the ClearPath's motor setup program open now. For this tutorial, we just want to be able to measure the precise move time to help calculate our throughput. I have an MCPV model pre-configured in absolute position for position mode, where the axis will move between positions one and position two when I turn input A on and off. So to open the scope, hit the plus button in the bottom right hand corner. Now, let's make a move and see what happens. Hmm, nothing's showing up on the scope yet, so let's just take a step back and get oriented. The scope's got a lot of powerful settings, and you just have to configure a couple parameters, which only take a minute or two. The majority of the scope has a large grid. This is where the data is going to show up. You'll notice three vertical lines. The light green line is the trigger point. This is at the point at which the move starts. The pink line is cursor A, and the blue line is cursor B. You can move these lines around to help collect data, which we'll go over later. In the bottom right hand corner of the scope, you'll see that there's a trigger mode section. The trigger mode is currently set to stop. This explains why we're not seeing anything at all. So let's just put this to auto and see what happens. So the dark green line that came up is the selected scope variable. So let's see what happens when we make a move. So you notice there's a small blip on the scope that came up, but it sort of went away. That's because the auto is gonna continuously collect data on the scope, which we don't really want for this, this case. So let's set the trigger mode to normal. We'll come back to this in a bit. Let's repeat the move again. So this is good. Now the data is staying up on the screen, but this doesn't exactly look like a motion profile. So let's take a look at what this dark green line is, the scope variable which is in the top right hand corner of the scope. So you'll see the scope variable is currently set for tracking directional. The tracking error is the difference between the commanded position and the actual position. So the tracking error is low, which is why it's at that gr the dotted center line, but this isn't really what we wanna look at. So let's see what other variables are available. As you can see, there's a lot of really useful parameters you can look at using the scope, and you can even scroll down to see more. The most common you'll probably use are the top three, the tracking error, the commanded velocity, and the actual torque. So let's set the scope variable to CMD velocity, or the commanded velocity, to be able to measure the move time. And let's make the move again. Hmm, well, the dark green scope variable move, but it doesn't appear to fit in the scope grid. So let's look at the dimensions of the x and y axis to get a sense of what we're looking at. Below the scope variable, you can set the dimensions of the scope with the time base and the range. The time base is the time between each grid and the x axis direction in terms of milliseconds per division or ms per div. So for example, the distance from the light green vertical line and the pink cursor A is 10 milliseconds in this case. There are 10 grids, so the entire x-axis distance is currently 100 milliseconds. This move looks like it takes longer than 100 milliseconds, but definitely less than a second. So let's try setting the time base to 100 milliseconds per division. To the right of the time base is the range. The range is the distance from the dotted center line to the top or the bottom of the grid. 
the top part of the grid is positive and the bottom part is negative. If you notice in the top left, our pre-configured speed was 3000 RPM. So this makes sense of why it's not showing the entire picture of what's going on because our entire range of the scope is less than the speed we're getting to. So let's set this range higher than the current speed limit. Let's just put it to 4000 RPM. Now let's repeat the move and see if we can see the entire profile. Okay, this is excellent. N now we're really getting somewhere. We, we see the entire profile. Now, the profile fits well in the scope, but we could probably change the time base settings to get a bit closer of a view of this profile. Since the profile takes less than half of the horizontal distance, let's just cut the time base in half to 50 milliseconds per division. And let's repeat the move. Uh, this is looking great. We have a great picture of this move now. But how do we measure the move time? It looks like it's about seven and a half grid divisions, so approximately 375 milliseconds, but it'd be really nice to get an exact number. Well, let's just move one of our cursors. You can see on the right-hand side of the scope, there's an A and a B with the time and the amplitude columns. These correspond to the exact position that the cursors are located. So you can see for cursor B, the move didn't actually come to a stop yet. It's still 520 RPM. Well, if you notice in the time slot, we can actually type in a specific time to manually move the cursor that way. You can either type in a number or use the page up and down buttons on your keyboard. So let's manually increase this until the amplitudes drop to zero for cursor B till we get to the very end of the move. Okay, now the B cursor is at zero RPM and it's saying that the move time from the green trigger point to the blue cursor B is close to 388 milliseconds. So this is great. Now we know how much time this takes to calculate the throughput of our machine. One other really useful thing to point out is if you do change your time base and the cursors disappear, you can always hit this cursors button to reposition the A and B cursors on the visible portion of the scope. Below the cursor portion is a section for trace storage. You can store the scope variables using the red and the blue traces. This is really useful to see the difference between two different move speeds or accelerations, measure move time differences in different motion profiles, look at multiple parameters in the same move, and more. Now, below the trace storage is a trigger on section. It's currently set to start of any command. So this is why the velocity profile changed from the negative portion or below the dotted line to the positive portion or above the dotted line in the last move that we made. If we only want to look at the positive or negative move, we can do that as well. You can see there's a lot of other great options here as well, but the most common ones are the start of a specific move type. So now the trigger mode makes a bit more sense. When on normal, the scope's going to start recording the data in the scope window whenever the criteria of the trigger on the window is met. In this case, whenever a start of a positive command occurs, the scope will start recording data at the beginning of the move. Now the single trigger mode is very similar to normal. It's going to again trigger on the start of the positive command, but it's only going to record the first time the trigger criteria is met. So now that we went into detail on all the parameters, you know how to configure everything to be able to quickly look at some settings in just a few seconds. For example, let me show you how quickly we can look at the actual torque.
So that was very quick and easy. And now we know exactly how much peak torque that that move took during acceleration and deceleration. So hopefully this shows you that the scope is very versatile and powerful for being able to quickly look and collect some data. If this Tech Tips video has been helpful, please give us a thumbs up like below. And remember to click on the technical logo to subscribe. This way you'll get notified when we release a new video. And check out one of these awesome videos if you want to learn more. We really love motion control, and this is a great place for learning. So please ask some questions in the comments. Thanks, and see you next time.